The single most common mutation in a gene found in human cancers is in the p53 gene. For example, ovarian cancers have 100% p53 mutations. All the ovarian cancers have p53 mutations. 70 to 90% of lung and colon cancers have p53 mutations. And up to 33% of breast tumors have p53 mutations. Because of this common mutational frequency in human cancers, the most important question to be answered is, what are the functions of the p53 protein in a cell? The p53 protein responds to stress of various types. For example, DNA damage and telomere shortening is a stress that p53 responds to. Hypoxia, metabolic stresses, and even oncogene mutations, like in the RAS, the insulin-like growth factor pathway, or the WINT pathway, alter these signal transduction pathways so that p53 responds, it activates. The activation of p53 takes two forms. First, its concentration increases in response to stress. This is because the stresses inhibit the ubiquitin ligase of p53, which is called MDM2. MDM2's inhibition allows the half-life of the p53 protein to increase and its concentration increases. But then the p53 protein is also modified by acetylation, methylation, phosphorylation, even ubiquitination and sumylation alters the protein to activate p53 so that it becomes an active transcription factor and transcribes a program in response to stresses. That program takes several forms. The first is cell death. Cell death by apoptosis and senescence can occur in response to stresses and is mediated by p53. But p53 also alters metabolic stability, it enhances DNA repair processes, and it arrests the cell cycle to allow DNA repair processes. In all of these ways, it is responding to stress so that mutations don't occur in a stressed cell. So for example, DNA damage and the replication of DNA that's damaged will increase the rate of mutation by up to a hundredfold. And when that's happening, cancers arise. P53 prevents that or is a tumor suppressor because it kills the cell that has damaged DNA and enhanced rate of mutations. It alters the metabolic stability back to normal. It allows DNA repair processes to occur. We often say P53 ensures fidelity by death or repair. Now, if a mouse is born without a P53 gene, because we've knocked out each of the two P53 genes, tumors arise in the thymus of the mouse, and these are T-cell lymphomas. T-cell lymphomas are useful because we can tell how many clones there are in a thymus by just sequencing the DNA from the VDJ regions of the T-cell receptor. Each clone has a unique receptor. So when a thymic lymphoma arises, then the number of cells in a single clone with the same receptor increases dramatically, and that increase indicates that tumors are arising. So we can use the sequencing technique of the T-cell receptor genes to determine whether the tumor is uniclonal, that is to say arises from one clone, or is oligoclonal, it arises from many clones. We now know that at nine weeks after birth, the rate of tumor genesis, the number of tumors forming per day, is 0.3 to 0.8 per day. And so all tumors are oligoclonal, and all tumors are composed of many different independent clones that are transformed. That's one of the really powerful things P53 is preventing. Second, the mutations that occurs are not largely point mutations. 
the point mutation rate is similar to many different kinds of cancers. The increase in mutation rate is due largely to copy number variations. That is, deletions and amplifications are the type of mutation that p53 prevents, as well as aneuploidy of chromosomes. And now we can look at, by sequencing these tumors, the genes that are altered after p53 is absent. And so when a mouse is born and p53 is absent, we have genomic instability because of the lack of p53. And the first mutation to be selected for is a deletion of the p10 gene, which occurs early, even before the T cell receptors are formed. And so it, become, it, it occurs in the progenitor of the T cell and not in the mature T cell. This alters the metabolism of the cell, allowing it to take up glucose and replicate. The next mutation that is selected for are amplifications in the cyclin D CDK6 gene. This drives the cell cycle. And finally, the third type of mutation that's selected for is in the notch pathway, which is essential for the differentiation of the T cell. And by blocking notch, or by blocking the notch pathway, one prevents differentiation of T cells, and so the tumors are made up of T cell progenitors, precursors of, of the T cell, and the multiple tumors that arise fail to differentiate. In this way, P53 is responsible for oligotumors that form over a lifetime in the mouse. 